What's the deadliest snake you can think of? One step at a time, gotta be very careful with a snake like this. What if I told you that waiting in the South American jungle was a pit viper that put everything else to shame? When you think of South America, your mind probably immediately jumps to the jungles of the tropics. Dense vegetation and the strangest creatures ever. But like with every corner of the globe, human civilization has taken root. Even on one of the wildest continents on the planet, people are thriving. And this means that there's bound to be conflict. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and for years I've been fascinated with the bizarre creatures we share our world with, from the creepiest of spiders to the deadliest of reptiles. All of these creatures tend to live out their lives unseen for the most part by people, as if they're part of a parallel dimension that runs alongside ours. It's become my mission to unlock all the mysteries that this secret world hides from us, but sometimes the secret world crosses over into ours without my help. In many rural areas, the agricultural land becomes a tempting habitat for many different reptiles, including venomous snakes. And where venomous snakes and people cross paths, conflict tends to erupt. Whether it's dangerous bites to people or the killing of snakes, these encounters can often lead to tragedy, which is why part of my mission as a wildlife educator is to help relocate problematic snakes wherever possible. And let me tell you, I wasn't expecting to have to do one of these runs in Ecuador, but while I was sorting footage in the guest house at my friend Emilio's ranch, he and Evan stumbled upon one of South America's deadliest snakes. Check this out right here. I'm not even in full filming gear right now because Emilio comes running into the, into the guest house this morning like, hey, we got a fertile ants. I didn't even know if we were gonna see one. So this right here is an absolute treat. Look at that snake right there. What you're looking at is the deadliest snake in South America. And honestly, by pure human deaths, this thing kills more people in the Western hemisphere than anything else. But look right here. This is a baby of the fertile ants. And I am several feet from it. And look at it, it's just sitting there. This animal wants nothing to do with me whatsoever. So I think this is a great opportunity to kind of discuss what's real and what's fake with these incredible vipers. Funny thing about these guys is where we're from, the, the deadliest thing we'd probably have to work with is a rattlesnake. And you're thinking, well, this thing looks kind of like a cotton mouth or maybe a copperhead or something. Surely it's not that lethal, right? You don't want to take a bite from this guy. Even a tiny little baby like this would likely be a serious hospital visit, but honestly, probably lethal. Emilio was telling me, we don't have any venom on the ranch, and we also don't have any venom at the local hospitals. If this snake bites me, I'm being buried here. <laughs> and that's scary. Have a look at this right here. In this vial is snake venom. That fluid is exactly what gets pumped into you when you're bitten by a venomous snake. And a bite's gonna happen, not because these animals are mean, but because for whatever reason, the snake was fearing for its life. With a lot of venomous snake bites, it's because you just didn't see it. A lot of pit vipers are incredibly camouflaged, which they're normally using to hide from their prey. They're, they're ambush hunters. But sometimes you're walking around in the woods, not looking where you're stepping, and you step on a venomous snake. See, snakes don't want to use their venom against us because that venom is like a precious resource. It's not an unlimited supply in their bodies. You can almost kind of think of it as like ammo. They have to expend their own energy and resources to make more of it. So they prefer to save it for their prey. That being said, bites do happen and they can be serious. Times like this, where the natural world, the secret world kind of intersects with ours, it's important to remember that the snakes were here first. Humans didn't evolve on the Western Hemisphere. They came over from Asia tens of thousands of years ago. All of the venomous snake species were already here. So this is their land first and foremost. If we watch where we step, even I would say learn how to use a snake hook for your own protection, we can actually coexist with venomous snakes in venom country and be completely fine. However, in cases like this, sometimes it is smarter to relocate the snake. Actually, one of the things I do a lot, you probably see me work with a lot more spiders and insects, but at home in North Carolina, I do a lot of snake relocation, where I basically catch problematic venomous snakes and bring them to wilderness areas where they're not gonna cause any problems. I don't film that a whole lot because for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't seem to like my snake videos too much. But if you would like to see more snakes and reptiles here on the channel, I'd appreciate if you left a like on this video. 
I'm actually about to embark on a journey to the deserts of Arizona, and if we can get this video to 1,000 likes, I'll be sure to feature a heck of a lot more reptiles when I'm down there. People will joke, oh, if it's so deadly, why are you in shorts? Why aren't you in boots? The thing is, with a lot of these venomous animals, if you are not within stinging or biting distance of the animal, you have zero chance of being envenomed. Now, these are athletic snakes, don't get me wrong, but you can see the way he's kind of just gently coiled on the ground. I'm many feet away and I have a snake hook right here. This is usually seen as a hunting tool, but in this case, this is kind of for my safety. So I can carefully, if I need to manipulate him for the camera or anything, I can just gently loop him up, pick him up so the camera can see, and he actually doesn't seem to mind too much. But also, if I need to, I can use it to keep him at bay. And even though I'm in shorts, I'm in gym shoes, I'm actually in no danger right now of being bitten. That's a really important thing to remember. What's really crazy about this snake is this one kind of breaks a rule that I've talked about here on the channel many times. Oftentimes, baby vipers are said to be deadlier than adults, but most times that's actually not true, simply because a smaller snake means a smaller venom yield. However, with some rattlesnakes and a lot of vipers down here in South America, there are some studies that suggest that that's not the case. See, this little guy is hunting amphibians and reptiles out here in the coastal dry forest, which means he needs a more neurotoxic venom to subdue his prey. A hemotoxin isn't gonna quite do the trick. And neurotoxins, drop for drop, are way more toxic than hemotoxins. That thing is gonna stop your heart a lot faster than, say, a fully grown rattlesnake. And given that the toxicity of the venom of this tiny little snake is so high, even though it is a baby and would inject a very small amount of venom, you're probably getting a lethal dose and then some if you receive a bite. But as you can see right here, a little bit of distance, a little bit of respect, and even a deadly snake like this, you can have a pretty safe interaction. Now, I wouldn't say go home and try this because we are, I'm a professional, I'm surrounded by professionals, and we've studied these animals to know if they are overly stressed. Right now, it's not rattling its tail, it's not posturing up, it's literally just sitting there waiting to see what I do next. Not an offensive animal, not something that wants a negative interaction. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna be relocating this because we're on Emilio's ranch right now. There's a lot of workers, a lot of animals, things that could come into an accidental negative interaction with this animal. Like I said, they're wild animals, they can behave in unpredictable ways, and it's important to remember that these animals are forces of nature. As long as we respect them from a healthy distance, they are actually no threat to us. Fortunately, we were able to link up with a contact of Emilio's who does research in the area. His name is Juan, and remember him. He'll be important in another video very soon. While relocating snakes can be stressful for the animals, the potential for survival was better than the guarantee of death back on the ranch. So we took the little guy to the dry forest preserve not too far away. In this environment, you can really see just how camouflaged these snakes are and why bites are so common. But if you remember nothing else, remember this. These snakes and the snakes you have back home, wherever that may be, are not out to get you. And as long as you are not within strike distance at any given time, there is exactly zero chance you will ever receive a venomous bite. As the Fertilance slithered off into his new home, we wished him luck. Quite a special snake, and one I will never forget seeing in person. Another iconic and deadly viper is the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, the number one killer in the US. These are huge, athletic snakes, and I tried my luck at catching one back in Texas. If you want to see that video, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.